The new year inspires many Americans to reflect on their health. Last year, we saw the rise of a mysterious polio-like illness affecting children around the country. And the work of a Chinese scientist led to ethical questions about gene editing. Meanwhile, medical breakthroughs like 3D body part printing and health devices you can wear show the increasing power of technology in our health care. Dr. Tara Narula joins us for a look at the medical stories that could affect us in 2019. Tara, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. Let's start with AFM, which, which stands for acute flaccid myelitis, my, myelitis. How do you say it? Myelitis. Myelitis. So what do we know about it at this point? What's being done to st stop it? It was very scary, very scary disease. Very scary for parents because it mostly affects children. And so what we know is that we see spikes in these cases every two years or so. And it really started around 2014 that we began really tracking this. Um, but the reality is I want to keep it in perspective that it is very rare. So we're talking about one or two children out of a million that will be affected per year. Since 2014, about 491 cases. We think it may be caused by a virus. We don't know which one and that the virus affects the motor neurons in the spinal cord. It may cause an inflammatory reaction, and certain kids may just be genetically susceptible. And what happens is the child may start out with a mild respiratory-like infection, mm -hmm. and then it progresses to weakness in the arms or legs, trouble with vision, swallowing, or speaking. So it can be very scary. In certain instances, kids can recover, but other times they have progressive or worsening paralysis that remains for a long time, or even respiratory failure. The CDC assembled a task force in November and really are working very hard to kind of get a handle on this. And we also know that technology continues to play a vital role in health care and the idea of 3D printing body organs is something we're going to hear a lot more about. Tell us about it. It's really fascinating. And so you think you can 3D print a toy or a replacement yeah. part, why not an organ? And so, for example, we would take an MRI of your heart, create a scaffold structure of, of exactly what your heart beyond it looks like, and then the ink would be a mixture of cells and biodegradable materials essentially printed with that scaffolding. That scaffolding then degrades over time and you're left with a 3D heart. Um, and so the idea is that this is really perfectly suited for your body because it came from imaging of you and it will prevent rejection because it's made from your own cells, the ink is. And so we think we're about five to ten years away from really having this implanted in people and we think a bladder may be the first organ that we're able to do, but we already are implanting things things that are artificial hips and uh, replacement parts, artificial stents for the airways. So we're, we're getting closer, um, a lot more work that, that needs to be done. What does this mean for longevity? Because I'm thinking replacement parts Well, you know, it's really going to help with organ, the organ donor issue. You know, we know that 100,000 people are waiting for organs every year, and there's only 16,000 donors. So the idea is that this can really be a wonderful thing for that. For several years, scientists have been talking about the technology known as CRISPR, which is gene editing. And then just at the end of 2018, a Chinese doctor claimed to have used it successfully. This is the future of medicine, being able to edit our bad genes out. Does it work? And he got hammered. You were one of the people. You, you, <laughs> he, I don't want to say outraged, but <laughs> you were very upset about that. A lot of people in the yes. scientific community were outraged. Mm -hmm. um, so CRISPR is a really fascinating technology. It's like a scissor that can go in and essentially edit your DNA. It has a lot of potential. And right now, we're using it mostly in cells and animal models to explore treating diseases that can be devastating, things like uh, cystic fibrosis, Tay-Sachs, Huntington's, sickle cell. It has a lot of promise in the future for things like heart disease and mental health and cancer even. But the problem with what happened this last month is that it was used to alter embryos. And when you're doing that, and the technology is still premature, you're risking creating other mutations in those embryos. Those children can go on to have uh, susceptibilities to other problems down the roads or other infections. And now you're altering the genetic code for every child that that child has. So it really needs to be done when the technology is ready. And right now, the scientific, scientific community is saying, we're not there yet. Yeah. So I think what the controversy has done is really raise a lot of red flags, and a lot of people are going to be on guard and watching to put up better guidelines about how we use CRISPR going forward. We haven't heard from that doctor as of late either, Tara. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes. We're looking forward to a lot more stories from you this year. Thank you.